Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Grimworks Comic Corner. That's right. And as you can see, it's a special day. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween. There you go. I hope you guys are having all the spooktacular. How, how would you say it in Spanish? Uh, Feliz que... Oh, Dia de las Brujas. Feliz Dia de las Brujas. De las Brujas. Feliz Dia de las Brujas. That's right. We're bilingual up in this joint. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is. I'm sorry to kind of... Mm, I wanted to bring you guys in and we try a little bit. Yeah. But, see? But, um... I can't really wear this for the whole episode. Neither can I. Wanna, I. It'll be more for the, you know, the sun. Because... We're going to put this right here, guys. But, you know, because we got some news for you guys. Oh, shit. I lost the mask versus mask match. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, yeah, so some good news coming out of the stuff for comics. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start off with one right here. Um, apparently, and this is from uh, IGN, so Shazam, or Shazam. Yeah, you got to get a little, little flavor there with the exactly. expression points. Uh, Zachary, uh, Zachary Levy cast in DC movie. So IGN can confirm that Levy, uh, who's best known for his leading role in the TV series Chuck, yeah. We'll play uh, Earth's Mightiest Mortal in the upcoming DC Comics film adaptation. This isn't the first time for Levy will appear in a comic book movie uh, film. As the actor played uh, Fandral of the Warriors 3 in Marvel, Su uh, Marvel Studios' Thor sequel. I think, he, I think he's the, like the, the swordsman from Thor. I'm not too sure. Hmm. I know he's the, he's the blonde dude, I think. Because mm -hmm. I know it's the big dude, mm -hmm. the girl... And then him, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, if you guys seen Chuck, you know who he is. He's the main actor. Mm -hmm. He's the voice actor for um, Flynn Rider from Tangled. Oh, really? Yeah. I know that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it continues. Uh, Shazam tells the story of a boy, Billy Batson, who by simply saying Shazam can transform into an adult superhero. Uh, each a letter in the DC hero's name stands for a different god historical figure, uh, those being Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, uh, Achilles, and Mercury, uh, whose tributes are bestowed upon Batson when he transforms. Oh, um, Shazam will be directed by David F. Sandberg, who did uh, Annabelle Creation. And... and uh, who the Rock is playing Black Adam. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for this movie I am because I'm a big Shazam fan. But the thing is, you have The Rock as uh, Black Adam. Mm -hmm. That fits him perfectly. Yeah. Like, you, you, you put on a, a whatever latex suit or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's him. He's not good. He has a I physique. Don't, I don't see Levy as Shazam. Because if you guys you know Shazam, him and Black Adam, when he transforms, they almost look the same. They're almost like... They have the same physique, the same yes, hair, the, the same physique hair. for sure. Right, the strong jawline, the yes. whole shebang, right? Mm -hmm. I can't see this. I can't see Chuck as just that. Uh, when I read the news, I was like, oh man. Yeah, it's a little disappointment. Seems kind of like a step back. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of that movie. But then again, that's just me judging on 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 on, like. Fitness. Fitness yeah. and the way he looks. It shouldn't yeah. be. Shouldn't be judging on appearance. Maybe he will make a good Shazam. Maybe, but the thing with him is Shazam still has a physique that he has. To, and, and don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, no, he does. That, I mean, he's a god. Yeah, exactly. But like, you think of like The Rock and how good he's gonna look. To be honest with you, the man, the man has incredible body. So yeah, but you know. And then, and then you compare him to this guy that yes will bulk up. Yes, you know they're they're gonna be training him for that role. But is he ever gonna look the part? I don't think I don't so. Know, movie magic can bulk him up. Like, no, yeah, he has to get some serious bulk. No, 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 uh, no argument there. It's he has just, to get some bulk so he has those shoulders and shit. Yeah. But we'll see. But, but then again, like The Rock's not a great actor, and that guy's not a. But when you play the Black Adam, you you know he's gonna have few work. Few yeah, yeah. Him. But it's all gonna be Shazam, you know, toying but, with him and shit. Okay, but was Chuck really that good? I like Chuck. Chuck it, was good, but it's because yeah. he played the role of a nerdy dude. Yeah. Like down to the T. Mm -hmm. Someone that he doesn't know how he's gonna get the hot blonde mm -hmm. and how could he be a spy. Wasn't and shit. it canceled after like it, a season? No, it was. It, it ran like maybe a couple seasons. I think five. Five or six. That much out of that fucking uh, show? I'm not sure. That sounds... I, I stopped watching after the second season, to be honest. <laughs> after the whole... You know, they started just dipping into the soap opera stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but... We'll see. We'll see. 
Another bit of news. Another bit of news, which, which I'm very excited about. When I saw this, I texted him right away. You, did you read what's coming out for comics? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm already on it, dude. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, this is from CBR.com. That's uh, comic book resources. Uh, Grant Morrison co-writing Metal One Shot with Scott Snyder. So, uh, on Twitter, uh, Scott Snyder actually put out a... Uh, I, I guess it's like a, a, a dry erase board. And I guess he was writing ideas. And it's oh, like, yeah. It says Metal, Dark Knight's Rising the Wild Hunt with Grant Morrison. So it's, uh, uh, his tweet says, So huge, uh, hashtag DC Metal News. Uh, the one and only Grant Morrison will be co-writing our special February issue, Metal, The Dark Knight's The Wild Hunt. Uh, Damn, February? February, yeah. It seems like... I thought Metal was almost like a, it's... End? No, I think it. I think it's gonna run like six issues. Are we in issue four? I think they're gonna take a break. And during Christmas time? I think they're. I think they're gonna take like a two month break. Honestly. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Man. I think. Yeah, I mean, they left them a good point. So they, I guess. they really did. Uh, but yeah. Uh, just reading through this schedule for February, Grant Morrison eight year stint on Batman is considered one of the most legendary runs of the character. Yeah, he's and done a good Batman. I'll give him that. He does, and uh, a lot of the things that Scott Snyder is taking, like the uh, Barbados and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. like the main characters, that was from Grant Morrison's run. Yeah, and no, so the he, whole metal psychic thing is. Yeah, exactly. So, everybody. so it, that's Grant Morrison. He's just basically fleshing out that idea a little more. So, it's really cool that uh, Grant Morrison is going to have at least one more shot at, at writing Batman because. You, you know what I wanted mm. to have at least a one shot, mm. Frank Miller. But Here, I don't know if it fits his style. Here's the thing with Frank Miller. Frank Miller only does what Frank Miller wants to do. True. And they're not. He is not going to write somebody else's story. Well, I'm one of those people that that said that Frank Miller lost his way after he got introduced to movie. Oh, money. he is a terrible writer. Like, like after the movie, he, movie, he, the movie money came yeah. in and just. Because I like, like I like, like all like, his old stuff is really good. Yes, but like here's the thing: he's very, 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 very hit or miss. Yeah. Because uh, Ro there was Ronan. Ronan was a DC thing that he had. That was okay. It was alright. I know my brother. His, so. his Daredevil run for Marvel was really good. They they say I haven't read it personally, but people say that it's one yeah. of the better uh, runs for Daredevil. Well, you know what I mean? He has the Dark Knight and he has the. Spirit well, here's the that. thing: he has the first Dark Knight. Well, he wrote the Dark Knight three. He he wrote two and three. Yeah. Two. I don't think it's as bad as everybody says it is, but it is still there's still a lot of loose plot holes and things that are happening on there that I don't really like. And then three was crap. Three was garbage. I don't really think much you, about three. You, you cannot defend three. If you want to, go ahead and leave it in the comments or send me an email. But to be honest with you, three was garbage. It was complete and other garbage. So Frank Miller writing something like this. I don't want him ruining like so far. Metal's, metal's been, been good. Metal's been bad. At least like like the main metal and the monster tie-ins. Yeah, the, yeah. The actual the, like, tie-ins were like, people. The story tie-ins, not really. Yeah, like the Teen but, Titans yeah, yeah. one, Green Arrow. The, Those are kind of whack. The but, one shots with the villains. Yes, shit, it's been really good. Really good. And, and the, the thing with the with the metal tie-ins is they're not particularly good, but they're moving the story along. So like that Teen Titans, Green Arrow thing, Nightwing. All those weren't collectively very good. They weren't. I'm, I'm not going to say they are. But they did move the story along in a way that was actually meaningful. It's one of those you have to read the whole thing to get the whole piece of the metal. But yeah. the one shots are really good. Mm -hmm. So good that they sold out so quick. Yes. We were supposed to cover the Wonder Woman that came out this week. Yeah, and we couldn't because it sold out. It sold out. If and you guys don't go the date of yes. or having your sub box, mm -hmm. there's very small chance of you actually picking up one of these one shots. Yeah, one of the things that... Uh, uh, did, that did hold us back in terms of that is um, the comics were delayed. So they weren't out until the middle of the day where I'm already at work and I just couldn't get a copy beforehand. And I got so, the responsibilities. Yeah, so... But enough of that, we got one more bit of news. Yeah, this one's it's actually... This is a fucking amazing... This one's actually awesome. For all you video game players out there, you're going to understand. Hellboy and Justice 2 release date confirmed a new gameplay trailer. 
So, the third and final Injustice 2 character in Fighter Pack 2 is just a few weeks away from release. Hellboy, the biggest surprise character of the DLC edition so far, releases on November 21st. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment announced today. Uh, coinciding with the news of when he's coming, uh, WB shared a new gameplay trailer uh, that showcases what Hellboy plays like. As you expect, he makes ample use of his gun, giant fists, and sassy attitude. The difference in attitude between him and Atrocitus, whom he fights for much of the video, is quite big. Uh, he also gets a look at his super, whereas many characters take the sky for theirs. Hellboy has unfortunate opponent head deeper into the earth. They mean hell. Um, <laughs> they hell just can't say hell. They can't say hell. But he looks yeah. really fucking good. He does look really cool. Like, one of the things that um, is really cool... And I had complained about it. Oh, this is from GameSpot, by the way. This particular article yeah. from. Um, but the the thing that I really liked is just like how heavily influenced it looks like Mike Mignola. Oh, the, the skinny and, and big. Yeah, he has like this huge upper body, yeah. and then he has like these little toothpick legs, and that's the way he's always drawn. That's the way I like it. And his Samaritan isn't like stupid big. Yeah, like, I kind of yeah. wish it was stupid big. Though. I don't know, bro. Like, like because. Yeah, they have the Joker gun in yeah, the yeah. game, which like I like the way he looks. Yes. And he plays like a brawler, big body grappler, mm -hmm. and I was like, yes, can't wait to touch him. Yeah. Because you know, Injustice good, Injustice Two is good, mm -hmm. but I've yet to find that one character that makes me play it all the time. I mean, I did mess with Dark Side a little bit, but this one is one of those attention grabbers that makes you want to come back into the game. Yeah. The. Um the, the cool thing, and, and I had mentioned, I was like, oh, I wish they would have added more texture to his face. Um, but his face animations look awesome. They look like an actual comic book, which is super cool. Um, you guys can find out November the 14th is when it gets released. Yeah. Uh, actually, they say November 21st. 21st? I uh -huh. thought it was 14th. No. Uh, let's see. Yeah, November 21st. First. I guess 14 is for the people that have the that uh, season. It's possible. The season trailer. Yeah, but go ahead and check out the trailer. Really, really cool. And Hellboy is sick of this crap. <laughs> All right, man. So that's going to be your quick comic news. I mean, mm -hmm. had a little bit of everything. Movies, uh, video games, and natural comics. Mm -hmm. Can, um, I'll give Grant Morrison a shot. We're going to get to what we do best. We're going to start reviewing some comics. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to bring you some... <clears throat> uh, honorable, honorable mentions, mentions. just quicks. We, we read them that were good, but not enough to go into detail. We're mm. going to start off with... Action Comics 990, written by Dan Jurgens and drawn by Victor Bogdanovic. Fuck, that's a weird name. It is. Uh, this is just the continuum of all stuff. Yeah, and uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, I wonder if it's actually tying in to the whole event, uh, the Doomsday Clock. Because, I don't know. because Oz is... Kind of spoilers. Um, Oz keeps saying that there is something that's coming to Earth that you can't stop. But is he just full of shit? Like, is he pulling the strings to that? Or is he actually talking about possibly the uh, Doomsday Clock? And if you don't know what Doomsday Clock is, basically the Watchmen characters, especially Dr. Manhattan, Yo. has been fucking with everything. So that could be a possibility there. Yeah, they're kind of universe. It looks like their universe and our universe going to go... Yeah, and that's going to be crazy because they're going to have so many different storylines going on at that point. Like, Metal's still going to go on, and then they're going to have Doomsday Clock. Yeah, but they have some really good writers on this Yeah, stuff. and Doomsday Clock is going to run a whole year. It's going to be a 12-issue series. So, so it's starting in November. It's not going to end until next September. So it's or next good. October. I mean, and The Watchmen is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I have no problems with it. I mean, it has the Doomsday Clock has Jeff Johns and, and Gary Frank, which I love that team. Uh, you would love that team because that's the Shazam yeah, team. I know it's the Shazam. I know Jeff John. But I yeah. mean, that's good. I'm waiting yeah. for it. But as a fact, good. Just uh, not worth a lot right now. Yeah, because it's still just these some open questions. Yeah, it's not it's answering open, anything. Yeah. And that's what's keeping it in honorable mentions. But next up is BPRD, The Devil You Know, number three. Written by Mike Mignola and uh, Scott Alley. All right. We, we get to talk a little bit more about Hellboy. That's right. Um, actually, this has nothing, uh, no Hellboy in it. Um, the whole it does have the it return. Does, it does have the return of Abe Sapien, which yeah. possibly one of my favorite characters um, from that right? universe. Um, the whole thing with it is he is back. He knows that something is going on. He... 
possibly knows that the end is near for the Earth. And he doesn't know what he can do about it. He doesn't know what anybody can really do about it. I wonder if that's going to be like a way to finish off the Hellboy stuff before it's, the reboot. It seems like it. Because that'd be like pretty cool. I know Mike, <clears throat> Mike Magnolia, mm-hmm. Magnolia. Uh, has been around cross around social media that Hellboy, his Hellboy run is going to be done. Yeah. That he's done with the characters. He's done with the world. Mm-hmm. So it'd be pretty cool if Abe Sapien kind of breaks the fourth wall and he's like, this kind of, you know, yeah, the yeah. end of the world style. It's more Deadpool. Stop it. No, I mean, but <laughs> you know how you read, how you, when you start reading so many comments yeah. and stuff, you're mm-hmm. like, I wonder if this is like a part of the writer being the writer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that'd be pretty cool. It is cool. Um, I just kind of want to see what it, because the, the very end, the last panel is super weird and you don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Like... Liz has a lot to do with this issue too because it's mostly Liz and um, Abe well, talking. What well, like, do you do? BPR what? BPRD. I mm-hmm. think what it is is like everybody it, that's in Hellboy was world without Hellboy. It is, but this one in particular, the first issue focused on a person that we didn't know at all, like Liz's boyfriend, basically yeah. that we didn't know at all. We thought it was uh, human Hellboy. Yeah, we thought it was just human Hellboy. <laughs> But now, like, things are starting to happen where it's shifting away from that character and onto Liz and Abe, and who's bringing about, who might bring about the end of the world. So, so pretty good. Um, All right, that's going to be it for the honorable, honorable mentions. mentions. We're going to get into some little bit more detailed comics, mm-hmm. stuff that we thought were really good, yeah, were. and we're going to try to tell you why they're going to be good. Uh, First off is going to be... Despicable Deadpool 288, it's written by uh, Gary Dugan and drawn by Scott... Coblish? Yeah, Coblish. <laughs> uh, and this is this is really good, at least mm, the way I like comics. Yeah. Um, Cable is really smart and he knows Deadpool. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's, he's in prison. Because right? yeah. if you guys read the first uh, issue of this series, mm-hmm. you know that Cable got um, arrested by the time cops, mm-hmm. but he lost his time machine arm. Yeah. And he's, he's there in his cell and he's telling, he's talking to the guard. He's like, dude, we have to do something because Deadpool's gonna come. And, he's, and the guard's like, man, there is no way someone like Deadpool could A, activate the time machine, mm. B, know where we're at. And and Cable's like, you guys don't understand. And kaboom. You guys don't understand how smart Deadpool is. Mm. He's like, one of the best lines there in the whole comic that was like, damn, this is the way I like Deadpool. Is mm. like, you guys think he's all nothing but talk. But the real scary part of Deadpool is when he's quiet. Mm. I was like, damn, that, that's true. That's true, yeah. Because they forget how Deadpool is really smart and mm. he's, a, he's a killer. He's a mercenary. Yeah. And he has been through everything. I mean, he's been part of the Avengers. He's been part of the X-Force. So he has ways to get stuff that people usually don't. Mm. And he, he uses, he has that, he accesses everything he could. To find where Cable is, yeah, and it's really smart. Of course, you have your crappy jokes and your mm-hmm. fourth wall breaks that don't fit into the story. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like their time you're making it. Yeah, it's not organic. They're just like forcing it. Yeah, which makes the comic. Uh, yeah, I mean, but but in the background, the main story is mm-hmm. really good. You have someone that's afraid mm-hmm. of um, of him getting to him, mm-hmm. and it's pretty cool because they even give it a little bit is like. Cable's been a time charter for so long. Yeah. So he has to kind of know, you know, something from the future and mm-hmm. a lot from the past. But you know how once you change something from the future, the past changes? Yeah. So it's pretty cool how he gets contact to someone to get some advice. You're going to love it. Yeah. It, it's, it's a, actually, it's a creative comic. This is not just a, a, a run of the mill comic it's just that yeah the things that bother me are just like the small little things that don't make sense and i understand it's just deadpool but that's just not the comic i like if it was a little more serious which for the most part it is when cable is the focus when they're talking through uh cables like narration and then what's going through his head uh that's honestly really cool i, I like cable as a character but in terms of like it's despicable deadpool but I like when Deadpool's not in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool looks like they're being forced to give what people want of Deadpool. Yeah. This comic would have been really, really good Mm -hmm. if they made Deadpool serious. If they made... If they made him quirky, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you made him serious, like, I have to go get him, Mm -hmm. and he activates the arm, and he does everything impossible, Mm -hmm. would have been really great. 
I but mean, you have these little bits like the shit talk and, yeah. and the fucking oh man violence is coming and shit I was like come on yeah it's just that, that, that shit's kind of whack yeah like, like one of the things that ruined it for me uh, he goes against the time cops right mm-hmm. and he he's like oh they, 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 they do the whole time uh, stop bomb mm-hmm. and he's like they ain't gonna work on me yeah that would have been so cool if that was just it. Yeah. But of course, he had that crappy crap. Yeah. Which made that seem horrible for yeah. something that could have been so cool. Yeah. But it was good, though. I mean, there's a really cool splash page of, I'm not going to say who, but someone's ripping someone's arm off. Pretty damn, <laughs> it's pretty damn <laughs> it's cool, pretty cool, to be honest with you. I liked it. And yeah, actually, uh, there's another cool scene where there, um, there's a body. And he spits it. And all the guts kind of just float. And it's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. It's gory. Yeah. All right, on to the next one. It's going to be... All New Wolverine number 26, written by Tom Taylor and drawn by Juan Cabal. All right, so this is the continuum of um, the Orphans of X. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys read the last issue, you found out that Lara found her mom mm-hmm. and the stasis, whatever it's called, little tubes where they put humans. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even know. Sta- stasis tube? <laughs> yeah, stasis tube. Um, she has some recollection of what happened. She mm-hmm. knows that you know, shit happened, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not all there and fuzzy. Yeah. Meanwhile, where they're trying to get along and she finds out that she has another daughter. Yeah. You know, play catch up. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Dak and being tortured. Or I think tortured. I don't know. That's the thing. This is a reason I like this one. Yeah. Because you could see shit coming, yet it's a still a mystery. Yeah, the whole thing with this one that I just was like, okay, it's fine. It's just not... Uh, it, it's not a pick of the week kind of material is it focuses on Laura and her mom's relationship and it kind of fleshes that out but it gives you no insight into the mom's character which I want to see yeah, they um, give you tidbits they give you tidbits and I, and, I, and I understand yeah. what, you know why they're not doing that she doesn't remember a lot of stuff but it would be cool if they kind of gave that my least favorite parts were the Dakin parts, to be honest with you. What? They're so cool. Uh, I hate uh, I, they're, think, they're, I think Dakin's no, just a stupid character. Because of Dakin, you get tidbits of what's going on around. Because this comic is good, but you seem to be lost. No, like, really. Because you don't know what's going on. At least, uh, at least when it is, like, uh-huh. when he... When he when he does what he does, yeah. and he, at the end, and you find out, it's like, yeah. okay, what's kind of going on? Yeah. You don't really, they don't really explain He's, who the orphans are. Well, my, other than one was a doctor, I think. Yeah, the whole thing with me is, Dokken asked a question that I have about the whole comic. So, if if he's lost in the comic, I'm lost in the comic because I don't <laughs> know what's going on. Like the the whole thing with Orphan's X, they they kidnap him, they chop off an arm, whatever that happened last issue. Now he's dealing with this. And the whole thing with Orphan X is we know what Orphan X is. They're all the Weapon X workers that were out of work, and they're like, fuck that, we're going to get back at all the Wolverines. I think so. I thought it was going to be people that, you know, are the casualties of the Weapon X program. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be, like, like, the security. It's going to be the doctors. It's going to yeah. be and every, every bit of that is going to come in to a play. But then there's, like, things where, like, at the end of the comic... Where Dokken where, uh, is saying, like, what the fuck? He, he literally says, what the fuck? Because he doesn't know what's going on. And then that leads me into saying, well, what is really going on this comic book? Well, I get the you, plot of the thing. You, you have two different things that I I don't care where don't they care. meet. Well, the thing is, I understand the plot. Yes. I just want to know who they are more. Like, the whole plot is they're trying to get the Marmosa Blade mm-hmm. and the stuff that it was dipped in his thing to kill off all these ex genes, which yeah. is Wolverine, Lara, the new girl, yeah. and Dakin. Mm-hmm. And you guys don't know that uh, Dakin's claws were dipped in the, the the tip of the blade. And you know, the Marmosa Blade is the one thing that could kill all these regenerators. Yeah. All right, so the thing is, factor. when Wolverine died, and uh, Dakin did it. Uh, Lara kind of took off the claws, or Wolverine took off the claws. Mm-hmm. And they have the sword. Uh, Lara has a sword and the claws mm-hmm. hidden somewhere. Yeah. And I think this is the whole plot. The whole plot is to get her to get the. Let's dig it out so they can have weapons to kill all these ex dudes. Yeah, but she's not even going to do that. No, she, she, knows, she knows where it is. She, was she, she knows where it is, but she's not getting the blade. 
No, she was. No, at, she, at the end of the comic, she's no, like, okay. no, no, no. She's get it. She calls somebody specifically. Oh, she yeah, get it, and yeah. that's it. She's like, she calls somebody. Should we spoil that? No, and she calls. I don't know. We don't know who. You gotta read the comic. You gotta read the comic. She calls well, somebody yeah. and says, "Hey, I need your help." And she goes, "It's worse than that." So she tells this person that I need you to get this blade and I need you to toss it into the sun, basically. Yeah. That's the whole thing. But the whole thing is, like, why Why is that character... What is that relationship? Because that was never... Like, I... I think... For me, I've, I, I've never established that those two characters were friends. Well, I, I think I think you had to read the past issues yeah. of all the... Of all Laura's and, and that's probably why. But then again, I'm it's, pretty sure next issue they'll explain a little bit more. Ho- hopefully, but the it's, thing, it's, the it's, thing is, I'm not like a huge Wolverine fan of any kind, really. So I'm just kind of okay. I'll read it, but I I don't find a lot of enjoyment. Yeah, I mean, it's just a mystery. I want to see who always gets splashed mm-hmm. into this book. Yeah, there's been a lot of splashing here and there of mm-hmm. characters, and the big question that I still have, and the reason I keep reading. Mm-hmm. Is is Wolverine gonna show up now that he's back alive and Probably. part of the world? Probably. I don't know. And then that just then that that brings me to the fucking problem of Wolverine. Like he's always the guy that fucking <laughs> saves the day with everything, no matter what. He's probably gonna be a, a spoilers in Legacy. He comes back. He's probably gonna be the one that kills Thanos or something. I don't even fucking know. Like that's what I think. Like that's my. It's like the reason. Like the reason he came back. Yeah. Because he's holding the gem. Exactly. And you're like, how is someone as Wolverine be able to hold a gem? So that was my. That's my whole problem with Wolverine. It's just like we don't know who's gonna save the world. Fucking get Wolverine to do it. Why not? I fucking fucking hate that. Anyways, that's gonna be it for our honorable. I mean, honorable for our deep. Thin books. Yeah. We don't the, have our our non picks of the week. Non picks. We're going to get to our pick of the week. Yeah, so my pick of the week is for stuff, and it's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, number 31, written by Rob Vendetti and uh, drawn by Patrick Zercher. Um, this leads off, it, it picks up where it left off last issue, where Hector Hammond was introduced. And if you don't know Hector Hammond, he's a guy with a big head that has telepathic powers. And if you watch that shitty, shitty movie, he was, uh, he was the villain. Um, you could have given a better villain than that. Uh, but the whole thing with this is I like that they brought in um, the little gremlins because that was the whole thing with Hector Hammond. He doesn't know it, but there was these gremlins from space that were trying to harvest something in his brain. Uh, so that's why they gave him his big-ass brain head. Um, so I like that they brought that in. But... Then it kind of answered the question of what was going on with Superman. They actually gave you an answer. So everything that happened in the comic book was what happened in the comic book. And um, it wraps up this on kind of a bitter note. That's why I like Green Lantern. It's it's always a victory. And it is always just like a bitter note that is always going to happen. And that's re- honestly why I like Green Lantern so much. This, this one was weird for me. Mm-hmm. Unless you're a Green Lantern and Hal Jordan comic... Mm-hmm. I didn't find enjoyment in it because A, his villain is his villain. Mm-hmm. Not a Green Lantern Corps like villain, but specifically when I see him, Hal Jordan. Yeah. I and then the stuff he does and the whole memory shit, mm-hmm. again, Hal Jordan. This yes. is very, I mean, you have to be a fan of Hal Jordan. Not yeah. just the ring users, not that, just a thing. It's like Yeah, a, but you could have, uh, the reason it's Hal Jordan is because it's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern. Hey. It, it's, it's his book. But, you could have done the same thing with John, and John would have had a different story. Like he would have had a different memory. Yeah, so, like, so you had to be the f- the, f- the fan, yeah. of the characters, yes, but not the force. Like I was thinking Green Lanterns and stuff. Yeah, like I, like, I thought Sinestro would be coming back. And shit I, like I was hoping that with this, even though it says Hal Jordan the Green Lantern, that Green Lantern would be like buddy cop with someone else from every sector. Yep, and he'd be like with. Uh, Tomari or like um, all the big ones like Kilowog and, like yeah. and, and all those guys um, I would love to see like him kind of buddy cop with that and I think past issues have done that um, it's just that this one is my favorite week just because you dive into the emotional I, side I, of I, Hal Jordan I, I, do, I do like the, the fact that there's always that big unanswered question uh, with him and his lava um <laughs> And what really happens there? So I can't remember I if she if, if she's still a lantern. Uh, that's the whole thing. I have not read 
uh, the end of the 52 run because mm. uh, I have I need like two more graphic novels I think okay. um, but there's a whole thing where she went with that Hal and her broke up and that she went with uh, Kyle Reiner Kyle oh, Reiner okay. I guess the artist yeah the artist and then uh, he died I don't know what happened but it's just my pick of the week because really really good kind of high note then a bitter note All right, my pick of the week is going to be Thanos number 12, written by Jeff Lemire and drawn by German Peralta. This is an unusual pick of the week for me, but yeah, mostly kind of because though. of the scenes of the, like close to the ending. Mm-hmm. Like, have you guys been reading this? I know we covered a couple of issues. He's been fighting his son. Yeah. They throw him into this world where they're going to fight it out. Mm-hmm. But if you guys don't know, Thanos has conversations with the Witches 3, which is forgot their names. I don't even know what uh, just say. Uh, it's the guys that they have the control of the past, future, and stuff. It's three witches. <laughs> I forgot their names. Oh, Sorry the, the witches of fate? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. So he makes a fair fight to make sure the Phoenix Forks leaves his son. Yeah. And they had a fight out, and there was not really much of competition. That, uh, okay, yeah. Go, go ahead. Go all ahead. right. But all that doesn't matter in this comic the reason i like this so much was the ending mm-hmm. and i'm gonna give you spoilers in three two one all right turns out that all this stuff with his son was being manipulated by a girl and it's lady death mm-hmm. lady death wanted thanos to come back to the mad titan power mm-hmm. so she could so he could be um what's the word worthy of her love mm-hmm. and the ending was just amazing she's like you know what you woke me up. Uh, I have been asleep. I am Thanos, right? Mm-hmm. I don't need you. And I don't need anybody. Mm-hmm. And the best thing is though, because if you guys don't know, I mean, Thanos is coming in a lot of the movies. Mm-hmm. The last couple of pages seem something straight out of the movies, yep. where he returns back to his uh, planet or his moon, yep. and he realizes it's a graveyard. Mm-hmm. He just walks there. He's just walking. You see. All, all the dead bodies and he just don't care and at the mm-hmm. end you have this fucking mighty throne mm-hmm. and he's just there and he just sits there and he's like I'm back mm-hmm. and I was like and he's like question okay so he's back what is he gonna do mm-hmm. and it's just that I, I got like little goosebumps reading mm-hmm. in it I was like I could totally see this like in a movie mm-hmm. I could totally see this beginning of something great mm-hmm. and that's the reason it's picking my week because it actually got a reaction to the art and the pages. Mm. The story line was eh. Mm. I was like, oh, really? Just like that? And you mm. in, in the battle with his son. Yep. It was so lackluster. Mm-hmm. But they left the big old question of, okay, so what's next? And what, if you're a fan of Thanos, this kind of makes you happy because mm. you finally got that mad titan gauntlet mm-hmm. user yeah and that was that was the reason that was the, the whole reason that when i was reading it it got me feeling and i love when i'm reading something and it either stirs up questions in your head before mm-hmm. you even done reading the page mm-hmm. and you're like oh man this is so amazing that's mm-hmm. that's what happened that was cool i'm a fan of the art the art is great i mean and the writing is good it's just that the storyline is just okay there's the, the fight with the sun was always going to end this way. It was always going to end with Thanos winning. Of but course. Now, the, my big thing is the Witches 3 banished uh, the Phoenix Force out of Thane. And now it's free. So where is it going to go? Who is it going to choose? And that I'm more interested in that than Thanos because really? we all know what Thanos is going to be. Oh, yeah. We all know what's going to happen. Like... The whole thing with Thanos and why I sort of like this better than any other stuff is because it's all leading to a movie. Like, it's all going to lead to, like, a storyline like the movie. Yeah, and, you're right. And I, I, I just hate that the, the character was given a lot of, like, depth and then it's just being taken away because, okay, now I'm back to being the Mad Titan. Oh, yeah, I don't care about Lady Death now. But now I'm just a mad titan. Now I'm just going to destroy worlds. And there's nothing... I don't know. I don't it's going to be that about. simple. I hope not. I think, I but think that's what, he, it, that's he what it kind of lot. looks like. I think mm-hmm. he went through a lot. So mm-hmm. he has more thinking power. Mm-hmm. Like before he... he has oh, he's the, always had that. Like, yeah, that that's been fleshed out with... Um, 
I think Jason Aaron wrote like a little five issue miniseries called Thanos Rising. Uh, you should pick that up because that's a really good thing. He has um, an understanding of his weakness. Yes. Like he, when you when you're a great power being and a guy, you realize that you have weaknesses. Yeah. Or you don't think about them because yeah. you know you're great and powerful. Well, this this these twelve issues mm -hmm. made him realize that yeah, he's he's a weak dude that he has weakness just mm -hmm. like everybody else. But uh, here, but that's the thing is now, like his biggest weakness is gone. And that's cool, but Thanks. but that's the whole thing. It's just like they even say it in the comic, like they ban they they like banish death, and he says like, does that mean? And she goes, no, you should know by now. You can only delay death. You can never get rid of her. And that's the whole thing. Is just like honestly, I don't know if that's death. Like I think that's maybe somebody else playing death. Oh, like I said, these are good questions of so, I want more. Uh, I want to know what's gonna happen yeah. next. And of course, Marvel really focuses on their movies. Yeah. And you're right. You're they're writing this so people be like, "Yo, you watch Thanos movie? Mm -hmm. Let's go pick up the comics." Yeah. And you pick up the comics like, "Yo, exactly yeah. like the Cause, movie." Because it's gonna be like he's just gonna try to fight the Avengers. Yeah, and pretty much. It's like you're gonna do that in legacy you're, you're doing that everywhere like give me something different and that's but, why that's but, why you know what it ends on that note and i, I am I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm skeptical but i want there to be something more yeah i, I, want, I, I want something I want to be good out of it yeah exactly like, sure if he's in the legacy run like that in legacy yeah. if he's gonna have an infinity wars mm -hmm. like run yeah like with the avengers and stuff mm -hmm. Right on with that, but this is his comic. I want him to this be more of the man in the mirror. Yeah. And yeah. Watch it'll, 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 like the first, like we started picking up like issue eight. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. Okay, yeah. I want more of this. I want to know more of the Thanos psyche and yeah. the way he thinks mm -hmm. and his actions. Because mm -hmm. you're right, he is everywhere. He's yeah. like every other comic in the movies that like, they start throwing him out, so mm -hmm. people be like, everywhere, right? Yeah, it's it's like Batman. Yeah. But. I want this as his, as like his comic, mm -hmm. to do that to get an, a bigger look of himself yeah. and what he thinks and how he acts and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's a good comic. Um, I, it's not my favorite from Jeff Lemire, but it is good, and I want to see if he turns it on its head. Yeah, but that's gonna be it for all the floppies that mm -hmm. we picked up. Uh, like I said, we have one or two more that we wanted to cover, but hey, they sold out. And yeah. if you guys are not there on Wednesday to pick them up or have a sub box, mm -hmm. you're going to miss out sometimes. And that was on us. Yeah. You know, because A, we're poor. And B, comments got delayed. And shit, yeah. life gets in the way. Yeah. And hopefully next week uh, I can maybe find them somewhere and we can uh, yeah, throw we them just, into our review. Yeah, like a little bit of uh, honorable mentions from the last week. Exactly, like exactly. Some of we can work that. But we're going to get into our trade bag, the mm -hmm. stuff we try to sell you to make sure it's good. It's going to be a little weird because mm -hmm. we know, ooh, spooktacular. Spooktober. It is spooktober. Right. Spook spooktober spectacular stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going through our trade bags and stuff, like I said, you know, income and stuff being a thing we had a couple big ideas mm -hmm. but time kind of caught up to us yeah it's um, been a busy week but this one is one of my favorites mm -hmm. one of my favorites in art style mm -hmm. and in quirky stories mm -hmm. and uh, i know we we brought you guys invaders in and there's other stuff by the way that i want to cover like mm -hmm. um johnny the homicide maniac mm -hmm. and lenore the dead girl mm -hmm. all right this is gonna be the same style guys yeah this is squeeze wonderful actually i didn't know there was more to it it's a squeeze wonderful big giant book of unspeakable horrors uh nice. this is uh written and drawn by jonan vasquez yeah and this guy has a unique way of drawing stuff yeah which looks creepy but cute mm -hmm. and i like that totally it's weird I, I like that it's like uh you know the covers of course and in, in color but the actual pages inside, I love that they're black and white because I don't think they would be as effective if it was actually in color. Yeah, right? it makes me seem more, it, more it, creepy, it makes, more horrifying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, like the stuff when it bleeds through and it bleeds like it makes him exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. you're right, you're right. And, and it's only a few issues to be honest with you of actual squeak. The whole thing is uh, there's a lot of like little anthology, like little kind of uh, different characters, different little stories. Um, but as for Squee, it's just a kid with his teddy bear and like how, you know, John Vasquez, but 
Maybe you don't know this version of Joan of Osco. This gets a little more creepy, a little more uh, gory, a little more murderous. <laughs> Coming from the eyes of a kid in his level of teddy bear. Exactly. It's weird. You know, when I tell people when they read Joan of Osco stuff, mm -hmm. I tell them, really like if you're reading his personal diary mm -hmm. you know how you, if you guys are writing journals and diaries yeah. right you write writing your, your day stuff but everything else you kind of scribble mm -hmm. or do little doodles and shit mm -hmm. that's how these still read like you could get the main squeeze stuff the issues but if you look at it as a mask he has like little doodles or like oh man you're right have an idea and just write it down yeah that's what it is mm -hmm. it's not really fully from beginning to end, mm -hmm. but they're entertaining as hell. Yeah. And I, you're right, it's creepy. It's a creepy little fucking kid coming over the bear and all this <laughs> shit happens to him. Yeah, and then there's like little, like the, the little stories that happen, like there is a pig that's saying, like warning him, like you shouldn't eat too much candy. Uh, and he yeah, like the aliens. You have the <laughs> aliens, yeah. Which look like invaders and exactly. stuff. Exactly, yeah. you can tell like there's ideas that lead yeah. to that kind of stuff. Um, the thing is, I read this a really long time ago, and we uh, just reread it so we can review it on the podcast. And it still kind of holds up to what it was back then. Back then, it was just like a weird kind of comic book that you just kind of read and, and really didn't. It's a good time. Yeah, exactly. It, There's no oh man, amazing stuff. There's yeah. no like oh, where does it go from here? It's uh -huh. just a good time. Yeah. And if you like the style of storytelling, if you like mm -hmm. the style of art, you can probably pick up. All the stuff that's written by him. Yeah, little, little fuck, little, like, what the fuck moments that, that are happening yeah. to the thing. So, yeah, it's pretty much the same as I remember it, but maybe it's a nostalgia factor. I was just like, oh, okay, this is exactly what it was in high school. And I was like, all right, cool. That that brought back that feeling of, like, looking back at those comic books and, and seeing it the first time. Being like, oh, what the fuck? That's weird. Yeah, it's a good, and especially around the holidays, mm -hmm. I mean, you you're watching this you still have a whole day to go pick it up and mm -hmm. actually give it to your son your daughter it's 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 <laughs> not kid safe but it's entertaining you'll be like oh. uh, you, uh, you, it's a it's a fine line yeah you be the judge if you want to give it to yeah. your kids um but it's definitely something that you should read it's just uh it's fun yeah. it's just that's what it is it's a fun creepy book yeah i'm looking at some of the some of the characters yeah. on the back maybe we should show it uh, the, the back cover and some of the characters that are there uh, it's Squee and then like all little things that all pop little, up from his yeah. imagination and things like that um, but yeah it's just a fun book it's it's not that even that hard to read it reads no. like Sunday cartoons yeah like if you guys ever read the comics in the mm -hmm. car in the newspaper on Sundays mm -hmm. it's that kind of style big panels and just beautiful weird art mm -hmm. and just very very small quick little words here and there yeah and it gives you a lot of explanation there's a couple of pages that are just like full um paragraphs like yeah it's like a full page of text um so it's it's it does have that feeling of a notebook you know where it is like a full page of text and it's this comic book and a full page and then you know it kind of goes from there um but yeah i say for spooktober and for halloween let's go ahead movie. and pick it up yeah it's good it's a good all around it's a good time, but that's gonna be it for the trade bag, guys. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do next is that my friend Rome here is mm -hmm. gonna bring you the list for tomorrow's comics. Mm -hmm. uh, we go big too. We go Marvel, DC. Then what he does is that he gets everybody who writes indies and compiles it into a short list mm -hmm. of things he thinks people should read mm -hmm. or the popular stuff that's yeah. out there. Um, go ahead, man. All right, and uh, I'm reading from a list that I made myself for all of these because for some reason they started adding trade backs into this list, like in the middle of it. I didn't yeah. like that. So first up for Marvel is Astonishing X-Men number five, Avengers 673, Black Bolt number seven, Captain America 695, Darth Vader number seven, Guardians of the Galaxy 146, Iceman number 7, Inhumans Once Future Kings number 4, Iron Fist number 74, Iron Man, I'm sorry, what the hell, Old Man Logan number 30, uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man number 6, Power Pack number 63, which that is really weird, uh, Spider-Gwen 24, and Spider-Man 264. Wow, that looks like a horrible list for Marvel. It's oh, and Old Man Logan, that's going to start a new run called The Scarlet Samurai. Yeah. I want to read that's pretty much it. I'm not interested in the Avengers. We read that a couple of weeks back, and I, I did not yeah, like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe Astonishing X-Men. I, I, I want to see where that kind of Shadow Man thing goes. But 
not a, not a great list for Marvel. Let's see if uh, DC can outdo them this week. So first up, we have Bane Conquest. Doesn't look like it. Uh, Batman number 34. Uh, Batman the Devastator number one, which is another the, one shot. The, the Doomsday thing? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Oh, it'll be interesting. This next one, Batman White Knight number two. Oh, yeah, let's give so, some more Joker. Yeah, already it's already beating Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Black Lightning, Cold Dead Hands number one. This is going to be a mini series. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's at six issues. Is this uh, the return of that Earth, uh, the Dakota one? Uh, I believe so. I think yeah. it's a leading into that. Yeah. Uh, Bombshells United number five, uh, Cyborg number 18, Dastardly and Mutterly. Uh, or Muttley, number three. Deadman, number one. So Deadman's coming back. Oh, that's cool. I like Deadman. Yeah, I'm down with him. Uh, Deathstroke, number 25. Green Arrow, number 34. Green Lanterns, 34. Harley and Ivy meet Betty and Veronica, number two. Injustice 2, number 13. Jetsons, number one. Uh, Justice League, number 32, which is a metal time, and we will cool. get it by God. Uh, mm -hmm. Nightwing number 32 and Superman number 34, which is the second part to that uh, Superman apocalypse storyline. Oh, that's gonna be cool. Yeah, See, yeah. DC sits in the throne. Yeah, so DC is kicking Marvel's ass this week. Yeah, it looks like it. But getting into indies, this is gonna be a small week because there's a lot of crap. Uh, Adventure Time number 70. Uh, Amory Wars Good Apollo number 8. Uh, Archie number 25. DuckTales number 2. Grave Diggers Union number 1. Only reason I put that one on there, it's not because of Grave Digger and like the monster truck. Fuck that. But it does have, uh, I believe his name is uh, Wes Craig. He does the. He does one of. Oh, uh, have you heard of Deadly Class? Yeah. Okay, he does the artwork for that. Okay. So he's going to be writing a comic and it looks pretty cool. Um, so it's a monster truck comic? No, it's not a monster truck Oh, okay. It was like... let, me, let me actually read you a synopsis. Uh, Grave Diggers Union. Uh, Deadly Class co writer Wes Craig launches a new series uh, with art by rising star Toby Cypress from The Omega Men. Uh, the supernatural world, so already Tony's in, uh, <laughs> has gone crazy. He's doubly in. Uh, the apocalypse. Oh. Uh, the apocalypse is coming and only the Grave Diggers Union can stop it. How? Well, the first leader, Cole, has to find his estranged daughter. But this, uh, but is she the one behind the apocalypse? Wild comedic horror with steroid zombies, monster gods, swamp vampires, ghost storms, and space monkeys? Oversized first issue. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I so am a monster fan, so why not? Yeah, I'm super, I'm, I'm interested as well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but Lazarus X plus 66, number four. Paper Girls, number 17. Uh, Shadow and Batman, number two. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters 2, number one. And Walking Dead, 173. Ooh. Mm. Oh, man. That's going to be tomorrow's list, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and let us know what you pick up. Mm -hmm. um, let us know what trade bags we should read and mm -hmm. we should kind of throw out there. Mm -hmm. Tell us if you're liking the show. Now, you can always hit us up on our social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Just search Grimworks. It's going to be us. Oh. Um, you guys want to leave a comment on YouTube. Make mm -hmm. sure to subscribe. Hit the little ringer to let mm -hmm. us know you're actually listening. Yep. But if not, there's always the old style. It can be emails are old style. Yeah, right I, now, I, right? I still use email. Yeah, time, you, get, you guys don't want to leave comments and, and follow us on our social media. Mm -hmm. You can always give us an email to citypod88 at gmail.com. And to let you know that this episode was brought to you by our sponsor, Favorites. Now, you know what? Injustice uh, 2. We were talking about Hellboy. In, in, Injustice yeah, 2 was coming out. And you know what? I've, I've kind of. I kind of wrote off Injustice 2. I was like, you know what? I love DC, but I'm kind of falling out of fighting games, sadly. But Hellboy, it was coming out in November. So you know what I'm going to do before November 21st? I'm going to place an order at FadeGrips.store. That's right. And you can get 20% off just like I'm going to by using our uh, discount code for 20% off. And that's Grimworks, capital G-R-I-M-M-W-O-R-K-S. They've, uh, you know, 20% on my favorite, the mystery box for Plow slash grow, uh, Glows. And yeah, I'm gonna buy those so I can, I hope he's not a churn butter character, but if he is, I got my <laughs> favorite grips to back me up. You know what it is though? You, uh, I, bought, I bought grips, right? And I used them, I was like, they can't be much of a big difference, mm -hmm. right? When you have sweaty hands, they do make a difference. <laughs> and uh, Vape Grips actually has something that we call a controller condom, yeah. which just covers the whole controller and this, uh, 
was it plastic thing? Uh, like, like a, rubber? Yeah, like a rubber. It makes like a rubber. your sweaty hands and makes you have good grip. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I experimented this week. I was replaying, you know, because there's a new update for Street Fighter and um, Injustice. There's yep. a Halloween event and Marvel's Capcom. They've got released new uh, characters. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, these things can't make a big difference. So I took them off my controller. Yep. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> it doesn't because it your finger kind of slips off whatever... Yeah, the it, thing is, especially for like PS4, I think maybe with Xbox it might be something different. I don't know. I don't really play Xbox, yeah, but but he has for both systems. He does have for both systems. So <clears throat> don't let that stop you. But uh, when it comes to like the PS4, it has like such like a it, like the grip that it has on there naturally. It just it rubs off very quickly. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I put the you know the the glows on mine just so I can you know see them in the dark yeah, but it doesn't have to just be for fighting games it's for yeah. all games exactly this actually make a difference guys mm-hmm. I'm telling you you should try them out again you should visit the mm-hmm. to use promo code Grimworks so when we send you save yourself 20% off you know a little bit of shipping a little bit of taxes and it's all a good time and they're not really expensive mm-hmm. but you're helping us and you're helping them yep um, but I hope you guys have a good Halloween. Yes. You know, be safe out there. If you have mm-hmm. kids, go trick or treating. If you guys go out drinking, remember mm-hmm. don't drink and drive. Mm-hmm. But all along, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. And we're going to see you next week. All right. Ladies, guys.